a new super troop is coming to Clash of Clans in that of the Super Wizard. Let's tell you everything you need to know about him. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I'm your host Judo Sloth. Sneak Peek Week continues with the Super Wizard. We told you about the invisibility spell on day one, the log launcher siege machine on day two, and now we move to the Super Wizard. Wizard. He is an interesting super troop, let's put it that way, and I will break down the mechanics, show you gameplay momentarily, but I want to first cover the stats and exactly the requirements for unlocking the super wizard. Now in order to unlock the super wizard, you do have to be a Town Hall 12. If you are not a Town Hall 12, this is all you will see if you can access the super troop menu. But once you have your wizard to level 9, these are the stats for the level 9 wizard. We are to compare that though to the level 10 wizard, the maximum level. He has 240 damage per second, 500 hit points, and 10 housing space. I know, 10 housing space for a wizard, but wait, he's pretty cool. What makes him pretty cool is his chain magic special ability. Super Wizard's shocking new fireball bounces to hit 10 nearby targets. This was expanded in the blog post, and it was said that it would bounce up to 10 times as long as the target was in range of the initial target. Not the Super Wizard, the initial target that he fires. So you could think of this similar to the E-Drag chain effect. The first Thing I did was set up a bit of an experiment here on the developer build. I put all of these storages close together so that we could see the chain magic effect. Take a closer look at the HP. The Super Wizard's initial strike does 100% damage but any secondary bolts only do 60% damage. So you do have to take into account the hit points of the building behind the initial target. Now I will say before we move on, this is not the last sneak peek, so be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to see my breakdowns. We are so close to 400,000 subscribers, you guys have been amazing this week, and my target is to hopefully hit that by Christmas. The lower damage on the secondary bolt aside, we need to know what the tile range is that the chain magic effect can bounce. So I set up another experiment with one tile gap, two tile gap, and three tile gap, and you can see clear that it is a one tile gap which can be bounced by the chain magic. You cannot go further than that, so it is exactly the same as the E-Drag. What about the chain going in different directions and do walls impact it? You can see straight away that walls have zero impact on the chain magic and it can chain in all directions. Unlike the E-Drag chain which goes to the highest hit point building, the chain magic will just go to all of them because there are 10 targets. It can bounce 10 times. You cannot, I tried, you cannot have 10 buildings that the super wizard can chain to. So you might be asking me, what on earth is the 10 target thing about? Real quick, in case anyone doubts me, this is where I tried to clump as many buildings together, but you just can't have 10 buildings that are in range of the initial target. Well, it is all to do with defending clan castle troops and skeletons. There are five skeletons in a maxed skeleton trap, so I put two of them here, and the wizard should be able to one-shot all of them because there are 10, and it can bounce 10 times. Straight away. Easy. That was beautiful. What about with three skelly traps? So we will have 15 skeletons, we need two strikes from the super wizard, and can they hit the builder hut as well? First strike, and the second one, they wipe out all of the builder huts, 10 targets. It's beautiful. Let's look at it a little bit closer though, because skeleton traps are one thing, clan castle troops are another. So let's see what happens with the super wizards. I froze the clan castle troops, this pesky super minion headhunter mass archer and mass goblins, but the super minions survived being at the back with only 60% damage through the chain effect. And actually they wipe out the super wizards incredibly fast. And remember, 10 housing space. So that is a big commitment. Massive shout out to Code Judo. Remember, if you are making any purchases, you can help to support your favorite content creator by entering their code in your settings before purchasing. My code is Judo. 
And it is much appreciated, my friends. Supercell share a very small part of their revenue with your favorite creator at no extra cost to you. So it really is appreciated. I feel I might get asked about the Rage spell in combination with the Super Wizard. And whilst it does help, it doesn't change the mechanics of the Chain Lightning. It still just does 100% and 60 with secondary bolts, so all it means is the initial target goes down faster. But I did wonder, could we spam a bunch of Super Wizards in to potentially take them all out? As much as I tried it, and it looks so cool with mass Super Wizards blasting into the base, it just doesn't work. They take down the initial building first, but it still looks amazing. I feel I will be asked about the invisibility spell as well. Does it mean that the super wizard does not chain to a building? And no, that is not the case. The building is still there. It's just invisible. Not that you would want this to happen anyway, because you can chain to 10 targets. You'd only be hurting yourself. This is exactly the same as the e-drag mechanic. I did answer this alongside many other questions in my invisibility spell questions answered video. I will have that video linked in the description alongside a couple of other relevant ones, but I will link you across to my log launcher explained video, which is the new siege machine at the end of this one. So we've taught you the mechanics of the super wizard, but how does that translate into an actual attack? This is the practice mode that you can try them out on, and I want to use it to demonstrate my point before we move to a full attack strategy. I think they will be limited in the sense that you need to find bases where you can take advantage of their chain effect, and you need to have them protected. It's very rare that you will be able to find bases to really chain through multiple buildings, and if you can, you will have to use quite a few super wizards in order to do that. Take a look at the Eagle Artillery and how we can chain through a couple of the buildings. Yes, it's great, but that was a lot of super wizards. And it's not the same as the E-Drag chain effect. It's not like they will chain forward through the buildings because it's all in relation to their initial target. Despite their limitations, I do think one of their good uses will be to cut out corners of bases to create your pathing. I will say that it can be incredibly difficult when you are testing new stuff by yourself in order to come up with creative ways. When the update lands and the Super Wizards are available to millions of players, there will no doubt be other ways to use them. But you've got to take advantage of the chain effect, the fact that they can chain in multiple directions and deep into the base. If you find bases that are tightly compact on a corner, I think you would be able to use the Super Wizards as part of a kill squad. And check it out. I used four Super Wizards, an Ice Golem, a Super Wall Breaker, two of my heroes, a relatively cheap kill squad, but I've taken out so much of this base, created pathing on a difficult to create pathing base, and I think that the super wizards, if you can get them to a corner of the base with just a couple of them, maybe something to protect, you might be able to really set up an attack well. The other thing I came up with, and I am pretty happy with this one, Putting the Super Wizards inside the Battle Blimp, not necessarily cloning them, but making them invisible. Check this out. I drop them right in this clumped area. Use a Rage, make them invisible, and just look at the damage they can do. You've got to be careful on the buildings around them and how many of the buildings you make invisible, so you have to use the invisibility spell well. But four Super Wizards in a Battle Blimp, and that corner of the base has also been crushed. I do think the Super Wizards will be best used as a surgical approach, more as a kill squad, but I was trying them with mass attacks, getting a little bit of success with a mass witch attack, but I do think you could try and merge them in with any ground army if you could make best use of the chain effect. Think of it this way, if you have a base where you can get good chain value but you don't want to go with e-drags, whether it be for the sweepers or whatever reason, the Super Wizards could give you an option, but they are so vulnerable to splash, whether it be multi-target infernos, scatter shots, whatever it is, they go down incredibly quick, so you do have to be careful. I did quite like having four of them in my clan castle, inside the log launcher, using an invisibility spell alongside a rage. They would blast through the base. Whatever was in the middle, you know the super wizards are in the core, and they will just shred it. So I do quite like having four of them in the clan castle. I think that will be a good use. I would personally prefer the battle blimp to snipe them in, but in terms of a mass attack, I do think they're pretty good. And 
around, even if the town hall is in the center, you can still protect them with the invisibility spell using this same method. So let me know what you think about the super wizards if you do have the custom judo slothy moats as part of my YouTube membership program. Be sure to use them in the comments. And if you do want to see the log launcher video, I have it linked right here, explained exactly what it was and how to use it. Subscribe button is there as well, my friends. You take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next sneak peek video.